Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic, trigeminal neuralgia. It will be useful for physicians, neurologists, general surgeons, neurosurgeons, dentists, ENT surgeons and almost most of the specialists. So everyone should have an idea of trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal neuralgia is a very broad speciality. So I am going to touch upon only the important concepts in trigeminal neuralgia. Here we go. Trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal neuralgia is a neuropathic pain due to the trigeminal nerve. So trigeminal neuralgia is a neuropathic pain due to the trigeminal nerve. Before I dwell into the trigeminal neuralgia topic per se, I want to talk about two important concepts related to trigeminal nerve. First, the trigeminal nerve, the three sensory divisions of thalamic, maxillary and mandibular come together, join the trigeminal ganglion and enters the pons. But once in the pons, the pain and temperature fibers descend down. It goes to the upper part of the cervical cord as slow as C2. And therefore, even high cervical cord lesions can affect the trigeminal nerve. So they can have disturbances of sensations even in a high cervical cord lesions like syringomyelia. The second important point is that the fibers supplying the center of the face are in the rostral part. Then as the trigeminal fibers descend down it goes slightly later and the most lateral part that is related to the ear is represented in the most caudal part of the trigeminal nerve. And hence when there is a lesion in the brainstem pons, you have a perioral area getting affected. But when it is in the spinal cord, the area around the ear gets affected. So as the lesion moves up from the high cervical cord towards the pons, the numbness also comes from the ear, from the periphery to the center. So it comes like an onion peel. It is known as balaclava helmet appearance. So these two are very important concepts. One, not just the brainstem, even at the level of the high cervical cord that is up to C2, the trigeminal, the pain and temperature fibers may get affected. And as the lesion, as the lesion ascends from the high cervical cord towards the pons, the deficit, clinical deficit comes from the periphery, from the lateral part to the central part, like an onion peel. So these two are very important concepts as far as the trigeminal nerve is concerned. Right. Now let's move on to the trigeminal neuralgia. Again, I'm going to touch upon only the important concepts because there's so much to discuss in the trigeminal neuralgia. So basically, the trigeminal nerve has got three divisions. As the name implies, trigeminal. Tri means three. So it has got three divisions, ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular. Trigeminal nerve is the largest cranial nerve. And it is mostly sensory. It supplies all the sensations of the face. It has got motor also. It supplies the muscles of mastication. It moves through the mandibular division of the third nerve. So basically it is concerned with all the sensations of the face. Very important point. The sensations over the face are carried by trigeminal nerve. The expression, the motor part of the face is carried by the seventh nerve. So seventh nerve is responsible for muscles of facial expression and trigeminal nerve is responsible for the facial sensations. So face sensations, trigeminal nerve, face motor movements, seventh cranial nerve. 
So the trigeminal nerve carries all the sensations over the face through three divisions: ophthalmic division, maxillary division, and mandibular division. It supplies the various parts of the face, but easy to remember. What are the areas supplied by the ophthalmic divisions? What are the areas of the face supplied by the maxillary? What are the areas supplied by the mandibular division? The ophthalmic division of the fifth nerve supplies the eye and the nose. So the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve supplies the eye, the nose. The maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, fifth nerve, supplies the upper lip and the cheek. So the maxillary division of the fifth nerve supplies the upper lip and the cheek. The mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve supplies the lower lip and the chin. So the mandibular division of the fifth nerve supplies the lower lip and the chin. So if we remember these important areas, then we can have an overview and idea about various kinds of sensory loss on the face. So the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve supplies the eye and the nose. The maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve supplies the upper lip and the cheek. And the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve supplies the lower lip and the chin. All right. Again, there are two important concepts about the sensory supply of the face. The ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve not only supplies the eye and the nose, and not only just forehead, it goes above up to the anterior half of the scalp till this level it goes so if a person complains of loss of sensations even over this area that means it is because of the trigeminal nerve so the trigeminal nerve sensory supply extends up to the anterior half of the scalp an important concept the other important concept is that the ear is not supplied by the trigeminal nerve. The ear and the area surrounding the ear is not supplied by the trigeminal nerve. It is supplied by C2. It is supplied by the C2. So these are all the important concepts of the sensory supply of the face by the trigeminal nerve. The different divisions. Right. Another important point is that the trigeminal neuralgia has got a predilection for mandibular division to some extent maxillary division. So trigeminal neuralgia has got a predilection for mandibular division to some extent maxillary division. So trigeminal neuralgia usually affects the mandibular division that is the lower lip, chin or to some extent the maxilla and the upper lip. The first division is rarely affected by the trigeminal neuralgia. The first division of the trigeminal nerve is usually affected by herpes, post-herpetic neuralgia. So, herpes ophthalmic neuralgia, post-herpetic neuralgia affects the first division of the trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal neuralgia affects the second division and the third division of the trigeminal nerve. So, very important. So, if you remember the first one, the other one is easy to remember. If you remember that post-herpetic neuralgia is seen in the first division of the trigeminal nerve, Obviously, the second and third divisions are affected by the trigeminal neuralgia. So, the first division of the trigeminal nerve supplies the eye, nose and the anterior part of the scalp, 50%. The second division supplies the upper lip and the cheek. And the third division supplies the lower lip and the chin. The area over the ear is supplied by the C2. Right. Another important and a very unique interesting concept is that the central nervous system the central nervous system is myelinated by oligodendrocyte the peripheral nervous system is myelinated by Schwann cells so peripheral myelinated nerves are myelinated by a different cell that is the Schwann cell and the central nervous system is myelinated by a different cell, oligodendrocyte cell. Right. There are some diseases which specifically affect the Schwann cell and cause peripheral demyelinating neuropathy. And there are certain diseases which affect the central part of the nervous system by affecting the oligodendrocyte. The classic example of a disease affecting the Schwann cells 
and the peripheral nerve demyelination is Guillain-Barre syndrome. And the classic example of a disease which affects the central nervous system demyelination, central nervous system myelination caused to produced by oligodendrocytes multiple sclerosis. So the central nervous system demyelination example is multiple sclerosis. The peripheral nerve demyelination example is Guillain-Barre syndrome. Fine. But then here there is a uniqueness. Multiple sclerosis, though it is a central nervous system demyelinating disease, it affects a peripheral nerve, trigeminal nerve. In fact, an important cause of trigeminal neuralgia of young age is multiple sclerosis. How is it possible? Trigeminal nerve is a sensory, it's a peripheral nerve. The myelination is done by Schwann cell. And multiple sclerosis is a central demyelinating disorder which affects the oligodendrocyte and central nervous system. Then how come multiple sclerosis causes trigeminal neuralgia? Very unique point but very interesting point. Though the central nervous system is myelinated by oligodendrocyte, as the nerve, fifth nerve comes from the brainstem for up to 7 millimeters, what we call as the root entry zone is still myelinated by oligodendrocyte. And therefore multiple sclerosis Though it affects the central nervous system and does not affect the peripheral nervous system, since the root entry zone of the fifth nerve, about 7 millimeters, is myelinated by oligodendrocyte, multiple sclerosis also can cause trigeminal neuralgia by affecting the root entry zone, that 7 millimeters. So, very important point and a unique point. And that's why, though trigeminal nerve is a peripheral nerve disease, peripheral nerve. In multiple sclerosis, multiple sclerosis can also affect trigeminal nerve and can cause trigeminal neuralgia by affecting the 7 millimeters of the nerve as it just, just left the brainstem, the root entry zone. In fact, one of the important cause of trigeminal neuralgia in young is multiple sclerosis. Always we have to consider multiple sclerosis in a person, in a young person who is having trigeminal neuralgia. Very important point. Right. Now, what are the characteristics of pain of the trigeminal neuralgia? Which clinches us the diagnosis that it is trigeminal neuralgia. For us, it is very severe, unbearable pain, shock like pain, sudden in onset, but luckily it is very brief, severe, sudden, shock like, brief. The pain may be so severe that the person may not be able to tolerate and may even start winking his eye like this. He's not able to tolerate the pain and he starts closing his eyelid like this. The closing of the eyelid winking is called as tick. That's why this trigeminal neuralgia is sometimes known as tick dolorex for painful winking of the eye. It is unilateral. Trigeminal neuralgia is unilateral. It recurs. There are relapses and remissions. The pain comes, subsides, if we take a treatment, then it can recur again. So there are recurrences. And then there are certain trigger factors. For example, touch of the skin or even washing the face. In men who shave their, their uh, shave the beard or even just a, a breeze can trigger off this trigeminal neuralgia attack. How does these innocuous, non-painful stimuli cause painful neuralgia? Obviously, breeze is not a painful stimulus. Touching is not a painful stimulus. But how come these non-painful stimulus can cause pain? It is because though these are all large myelinated fibers, the touch fibers, according to one of the schools of the thought, the trigeminal neuralgia is because of vascular compression. So when there is a vascular compression, it could be basilar artery according to some schools of thought. It could be superior cerebellar artery according to some schools of thought or it could be a tortuous vein also. 
whatever may be whatever may be the vessel if it goes and compresses the trigeminal nerve it produces demyelination so the my well myelinated nerve which is demyelinated becomes hyper excitable and coupled with the adjoining pain carrying nerves and can produce pain so very interesting pathophysiological mechanism a non painful stimulus like breeze or touch can induce severe pain in person suffering from trigeminal neuralgia because the vascular compression of the trigeminal nerve causes demyelination hyper excitability of the nerve which couples with the pain carrying nerves and produces severe pain so these are known as trigger factors so it could be anything a touch or a breeze or, or shaving or it could be anything so these are known as trigger factors one important point of trigeminal neuralgia one characteristic feature of the pain of the trigeminal neuralgia is that though there is severe pain there is a, there is no objective sensory loss if there is sensory loss it rules out trigeminal neuralgia very important clinical point trigeminal neuralgia though it is painful there is no objective sensory loss if there is sensory loss it rules out trigeminal neuralgia so these are all the characteristic features characteristic features of pain of trigeminal neuralgia so pathophysiology as i said how does touch cause pain compression of the trigeminal root by the vessel it could be basilar artery superior cerebellar artery or an anomalous or a tortuous vein causes demyelination of the large myelinated fibers which electrically couple with the pain carrying fibers and therefore touch can produce pain a non painful stimuli perceived as pain we call it as allodynia right i said if a person comes with trigeminal neuralgia clinically or symptomatology suggests of trigeminal neuralgia in young we should suspect multiple sclerosis it indirectly implies that trigeminal neuralgia is usually seen in elderly people so the trigeminal neuralgia the classic trigeminal neuralgia is seen in elderly persons but the trigeminal neuralgia in young persons see, is seen in multiple sclerosis so now the question comes why this classic trigeminal neuralgia is seen in elderly persons there are few speculated mechanisms one as we become older as we become aged the vessel wall thickens it becomes more tortuous so it can go easily compress the nerve second thing the brain starts sagging so because of the sagging of the brain and the thickening and the tortuosity of the vessel trigeminal neuralgia the classic trigeminal neuralgia is seen in elderly if trigeminal neuralgia is present in young always we have to suspect multiple sclerosis right these are the important points so i've been talking about the trigeminal neuralgia but what are the other disorders which can affect the trigeminal nerve so what are the other disorders which can affect the trigeminal nerve one in the brain stem let's go systematically one in the brain stem as i said if there's a root entry zone multiple sclerosis is a disorder which affects central nervous system and the myelination caused by oligodendrocyte but it causes trigeminal neuralgia though trigeminal nerve is a peripheral nerve because the 7 mm is coming from the brain stem the myelination is done by the oligodendrocyte so multiple sclerosis causes trigeminal nerve in young always a person having tri symptom suggest of trigeminal neuralgia in young think of multiple sclerosis so if a person is young if the symptomatology is bilateral if there is relapsing and remitting picture they have severe episode of multiple sclerosis we treat when they become better only to recur again progressively the relapse starts increasing and at one particular stage it may become progressive secondary progressive stage so relapsing and remitting type we have to think of multiple sclerosis so when we suspect multiple sclerosis we do mri scan it shows plaques especially in the periventricular region what we call as dawson's fingers so we see plaques when we do csf we can get 
oligoclonal bands and the treatment obviously is immunomodulant drugs because it's an autoimmune disorder of the central nervous system we give immunomodulant drugs brainstem again as i said a syringomyelia or syrinx can extend and can again affect the trigeminal nerve when we come to the preganglion region one of the common disorders affecting the trigeminal nerve is acoustic neuroma so a person has got other features like eighth nerve involved fifth nerve the corneal reflex being affected eighth nerve being affected vestibular disturbances hearing disturbances along with the fifth nerve seventh nerve we should think of acoustic neuroma and if only the peripheral nerve is involved we have to think of connective tissue disorders or nasopharyngeal carcinoma so these are all the other disorders we can affect the trigeminal nerve but trigeminal neuralgia usually produces sensory disturbances of the face so what are the other disorders which can give rise to pain or sensory disturbances of the face one is the cluster tic that means a person is got both tic winces with pain trigeminal neuralgia and cluster headache headache basically there are two types primary headache secondary headache primary headache basically there are four types one tension type headache second is a migraine third is cluster headache and fourth is other primary headaches so the cluster headache produces pain around the orbit there will be parasympathetic features there will be lacrimation and it is also known as alarm clock type of headache that means at one particular time same time it recurs on every day so sometimes this cluster headache may be associated with the tic so we call that as cluster tic that means trigeminal neuralgia along with the cluster headache may be present together which we call as cluster tic the treatment of cluster headache is totally different we give oxygen we give steroid supplement and just the opposite of migraine migraine people they want to sit quietly to get rid of the headache whereas cluster headache people they keep moving around for the headache to come down so cluster and tic can get can be associated together we call as cluster tic type second the disturbances of the the sensory disturbances of the face or the pain we should not only consider trigeminal neuralgia there are other possibilities like teeth if teeth is involved there could be a pain radiating in the face so always consider dental problems also temporomandibular joint dysfunction can also produce pain over the face in elderly especially above 50 years temporal arthritis inflammation or vasculitis can cause severe pain wherein if we don't treat immediately if we don't diagnose and treat immediately persons at a later point of time may develop blindness because the ophthalmic artery gets involved easy to diagnose one is the elderly person second this the esr is elevated and a good thing about the temporal arthritis is that once we diagnose that a person is having severe pain around the temple region and the esr is elevated the moment we give steroids they have they show a dramatic response to steroids so we should also consider temporomandibular joint dysfunction and temporal arthritis and migraine migraine also affects the trigeminal nerve in fact the pathogenesis of migraine is postulated to be because of the trigeminal vascular system the meninges get affected the vessels of the meninges get affected they take the impulses to the trigeminal nerve which transmits it to pons and then person experiences severe pain so trigeminal vascular system the brain itself has got no pain receptors you cut brain there is no pain but the meninges and the vessels on the meninges they are pain sensitive organs and the pain is carried from the meningeal vessels through the trigeminal nerve so this trigeminal vascular system is postulated to be the cause for pain in migraine so when a person comes with pain in the face and the head especially one side we should consider migraine the trigeminal vascular system here they like quietly they prefer to be in the dark and any light or hearing sounds or moving about or stress will aggravate the migraine again treatment of migraine there are two types one 
treatment of headache per se where we give naproxen or non steroidal anti inflammatory agents and prevention of migraine where we give tricyclic antidepressants beta blockers or calcium channel blockers so the treatment of migraine will be different to that of the treatment of trigeminal neuralgia the treatment of trigeminal neuralgia i'll be talking now right so this is about the trigeminal neuralgia the other trigeminal nerve disorders and other causes of facial pain as i said the treatment of the other conditions is different from the treatment of trigeminal neuralgia now let's focus on the management of trigeminal neuralgia first as like any other disorder we try medical treatment if medical treatment fails then and then only we go for surgical treatment so the treatment of my trigeminal neuralgia is basically two types one medical management of trigeminal neuralgia second is the surgical management of trigeminal neuralgia the medical management of neuralgia basically consists of two types of drugs one the sodium channel blockers the anti epileptic drugs and second is the gaba energic drugs which enhance the level of gaba the anti epileptic drugs like carbamazepine ox carbamazepine phenytoin we use to treat trigeminal neuralgia one may wonder how these anti epileptic drugs which are used for epilepsy are useful for neuralgic conditions like trigeminal neuralgia it's very interesting as i said the anti epileptic drugs they act through the sodium channels they are sodium channel blocking drugs be it carbamazepine ox carbamazepine or phenytoin they are all sodium channel blocking drugs we all know that in a myelinated nerves when they are myelinated at the internodes there are lots of sodium sodium channels so an action potential jumps from one node one internode of the ranvier to the other internode of ranvier through this myelinated nerves it jumps because the sodium channels get accumulated in the internodes and from there it jumps to the other internode so there are a lot of sodium channels present in the internodes so the action potential takes place and spreads because of the sodium channels present in the internodes so when we block these sodium channels by giving sodium channel blockers there is no spread of the action potential and thus we block the spread of the painful impulses so very interesting pathogenesis so we give sodium channel blockers to block the sodium channel and thens to prevent the jump and spread of the painful impulses from one node of ranvier to the other node of ranvier through saltatory conduction so the sodium channel blockers are carbamazepine ox carbamazepine and phenytoin the disadvantage of carbamazepine is that it induces its own metabolism auto induction and it can produce lot of side effects including bone marrow depression and therefore there are later generation drugs new generation drugs like ox carbamazepine which is as effective as carbamazepine minus the side effects then we can give phenytoin also which is also a sodium channel blockers so this is one group of drugs sodium channel blockers or anti epileptic drugs mainly carbamazepine ox carbamazepine phenytoin the other group of drugs are gaba energic drugs like pregabalin gabapentin or baclofen they are gaba energic drugs how do they act gaba gaba amino butyric acid is a neuro inhibitory substance but how does this act as i said the action impulse jumps from one node of the other node of ranvier through the sodium channels the initiation of the action potential namely the depolarization is because of sodium influx the sodium which is a positively charged ion the moment it enters crosses the membrane and comes intracellularly an action potential is generated depolarization takes place and action potential is generated so the moment the positively charged ion like sodium enters there's a depolarization and action potential is generated on the contrary if we don't allow the sodium ion positively charged ion into the cell but allow a chloride ion which is a negatively charged ion into the cell 
the opposite things happen in fact it becomes repolarized or hyperpolarized and the painful impulses cannot be conducted so this is the action of gaba energetic drugs like pregabalin gabapentin or baclofen which acts through the gaba receptors and allows chloride infl influx the negatively charged chloride influx so that the channel becomes so that the cell becomes repolarized or either in a hyperpolarized state so it will not be responding and the action potential is not generated nor it is spread the painful impulse is nor generated or spread so this is how these two beautiful group of drugs act to control the pain of neuralgia trigeminal neuralgia one the sodium channel blockers the anti epileptic drugs namely carbamazepine oxcarbamazepine or phenytoin second is the gaba energetic drugs which enhance gaba and allow the chloride influx like pregabalin gabapentin or baclofen so this is medical management finally if the person is not able is the pain is not getting controlled by medical management we restore to surgical management basically there are three types of surgery one is the microvascular decompression it is an invasive surgery it's a sub occipital approach they go behind the they go posteriorly behind the occipital and then enter and go to the pons and allow the vessel and take it away from the nerve so it is a decompressive surgery they remove the compression so they decompress the vascular compression on the nerve so it is a surgical procedure it is a decompressive surgery they go posteriorly so it is known as microvascular decompression posterior approach sub occipital craniotomy it is an invasive procedure the second procedure is the gamma knife radio surgery of the trigeminal nerve root here they make a frame fix it on the scalp and allow the cobalt radiations to be focused on the trigeminal nerve root so that it does not function well so this is a gaba knife radio surgery this is this is non invasive and it may not be as effective as the surgical procedure but the advantage is that it is non invasive the third is radio frequency thermal rhizotomy here they give heat energy they go through the subcutaneous subcutaneous way and then they give heat energy to the trigeminal nerve root so it is known as radio frequency thermal rhizotomy and by delivering heat energy they the function of the trigeminal nerve root is affected so these three are the surgical procedures so we have two medical procedures two groups of drugs sodium channel blockers gaba nerve drugs three surgical procedures gaba gaba knife or or microvascular decompression gamma knife radio surgery or radio frequency thermal radiation so this is a broad overview of the trigeminal nerve the trigeminal neuralgia the uniqueness of multiple sclerosis affecting a peripheral nerve like trigeminal nerve the differential diagnosis which includes the migraine cluster headache and others and the treatment what i touched upon are just the fundamental concepts of trigeminal neuralgia i really enjoyed giving this fascinating lecture on trigeminal neuralgia i also hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture as much as i have enjoyed delivering it if you have any suggestions or comments you can please post it on to my youtube channel but don't forget to like and subscribe my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts and my fb page dr srinivas concepts thank you bye